In this video, we're going to look at one of two theories about acids and bases. And the first one we're going to look at is called the Arrhenius theory. And uh, this theory describes that uh, acids are substances that dissolve in water to create hydrogen ions, or H+. So two examples. First one is hydrochloric acid, breaks up into H+, and Cl-. And our second example, we've got sulfuric acid breaking up into 2H+, and SO4-2. Just to point out here, we need this equation to balance. Over on this side, we have two hydrogens, so that's why we need a 2 in front to give us two hydrogens. Uh, and over here, we have one sulfate. And on the right side, also one sulfate. You'll notice that our charge is also balanced. On the left side of our equation, there's no charge to sulfuric acid. And over on this side, we have two positives and two negatives and of course those neutralize each other and so the right side of our equation also has a charge of nothing when it comes to bases arrhenius said that uh, compounds are bases if they dissolve to produce hydroxide ions so an example could be sodium hydroxide dissolves into sodium plus and oh minus so a couple of problems with uh with this theory though uh, the first problem is that uh, Arrhenius figured that water must be included in these reactions, and there's a couple of examples here showing that that's not the case. And uh, number two, perhaps even more importantly, is that uh, OH doesn't always happen. For instance, if you put NH3 here in H2O in water, it's going to be basic. But clearly, NH3 has no hydroxide ions in its formula, so uh, you cannot explain what's going on here with the Arrhenius theory. So you need a second theory, and we'll talk about that in the next video. In this video, we're going to take a look at our second theory of acids and bases. It's going to be the bronsted lowry theory. Okay, so firstly, our definition. Uh, acids were defined as molecules that produce H+. They can give them up. And bases were defined as molecules or ions that can actually combine with hydrogen. They can accept them. So another way I like to say this is that acids are H+, ion donors, and bases are H+ plus ion acceptors. This is a key thing you got to remember. You always got to refer back to, uh, to this expression to figure out in your equation what's an acid and what's a base. Okay, so we're going to take a look at three examples here. First situation we're going to look at is uh, when you actually know exactly what you're starting with is an acid. So for example, HF, this is hydrofluoric acid. Now what we're going to do with this, and this is going to be different than the Arrhenius method, is we are going to combine this with water. So this is a big difference between the two methods. The Arrhenius method just had things dissolving, and Bronsted-Lurie literally has water in its equation. So first thing we've got to do is decide what's an acid and what's a base according to our definition. So remember that HF is hydrofluoric acid, so we can define that as an acid. Now, acids want to give up hydrogens. What do bases want to do? They want to accept it. So what's going to happen here is this hydrogen right here is going to move on over to water. So in this example, water is going to be acting as a base. So if we remove that hydrogen, what are we left with? Well, we are left with a fluorine that has a minus one charge. And what other thing we've created is we've taken water that's neutral and we've added an H plus to it. And we've come up with something that's called H3O plus. This is the hydronium ion. That's an important name to know. Next thing and last thing we're going to do here is we are going to identify a couple of pairs. So acid-base conjugate pairs, a pair of ions or molecules that are different by a single H+. We've been moving an H+, along in this example, so we should have a couple of pairs. So all you need to do is find a couple that are the same. So right here, this HF, it should be different by a single H+, than this F-. So we're going to use the word conjugate. Now, we already used the word acid, so we're going to call this the base. Notice the words acid and base go together. So our other pair should be the other two left here. So you'll notice that water, H2O, is different than H3O by a single H+. So what are we going to call this one? Well, we already used the word base, so that's going to make this our conjugate acid. Again, the words acid and base go together. Okay, second example. Experimental results are known. So for instance, ammonia, NH3, you put that in water and uh, test it with some pH paper, what you're going to find is it's actually a basic solution. So my question is, what's the basic molecule? Well, you should know by now that hydroxide or OH- is the basic molecule. So there it is. So how did we come up with this? Well, the only way we can come up with it is, well, it didn't come from the NH3. Where it actually came from is the water molecule. you got to think of water as made up of HOH. And what is exactly happening here is this H is getting transferred over to the ammonia. So what happens to ammonia? It actually changes to NH4 plus. 
So our water is acted as the acid, it's given away a hydrogen. The ammonia gas is acted as the base and it has accepted it. So what about our pairs here? Well, let's see. First one we can pair up is this NH3 with the NH4+. Plus. We've got the word base, that means we need the word acid. And that must make our other two the other pair. And we've got a conjugate, let's see, we've got acid, and that should make that a conjugate base. Our third and final situation, we've got an ion. Now, ions always want to get back to neutral. So if it's positive, it wants to lose a hydrogen. If it's negative, it wants to gain. So we've got a situation here where we've got a partial molecule. This is a, a negative ion. So what it's going to want to do is it's going to want to gain a hydrogen. Again, where is that going to come from? It's going to come from water's HOH. So we're going to move this H onto this molecule. So what's happening here is this HCO3- is acting as our base, and that must mean water is acting as the acid. So what do we make? Well, we make carbonic acid, and what we're left with is OH-. Again, we'll make our pairs. We've got our conjugate acid base here, leaving us with another conjugate acid base pair over here. So the last thing we'll look at here is how we can uh, describe the acid ionization constant, which is Ka. So uh, our general formula of our weak acid as is follows here. And what we can do is we can rewrite that you know, with our uh, products on the top and reactants on the bottom. But there's actually a couple of ways we can simplify this because frankly, water is not really playing a, a major part in this because it is sort of a constant. So we've removed water from it. This kind of almost looks more like our heinous method of doing something. And then we can rewrite our Ka value uh, without the water involved. As well, too, we've got a chart here of some Ka values, and these are going to be useful in future lessons for determining some uh, specific values for particular questions.